Welcome to another episode of Do Not Visit, a series where I talk about places in Game of Thrones, the world of ice and fire, you don't ever want to visit. Unless you're one of my subscribers. Then you're just gonna go there to spite me. I love you too. This episode of Do Not Visit, I want to talk about the Whispers, a ruined castle on Crackclaw Point in the northeastern crown lands owned by House Crab. And when you see this castle, you know in your hearts of hearts, it has the makings of a haunted house. One, it sits on a cliff overlooking a sea the narrow sea to be specific. Houses on cliffs always give an extra 20% chance of being haunted. Next, the castle, as mentioned before, is in ruins and is overgrown with forests, which gives it another plus 20% chance of haunting occurring here. The curtain wall has fallen, the beacon tower sits in the sea 50 feet below, and poisonous red ivy grows here, which should scream at you. Don't touch. Well, I hope you don't go around touching poison ivy. There are also caverns beneath the castle and a large smuggler's cove nearby. Oh, and I guess a ton of people have been murdered in the bogs around this place. So let's recap before going on. It's a ruined castle on a cliff overlooking a sea next to bogs full of dead people. I don't think I need to go on, but I will because my subscribers are strong of spirit. And by strong of spirit, I mean dumbasses. I'm still getting postcards from Hardhome and Sty Guy, you assholes. So to understand further why I would not visit this castle, and you shouldn't either, you have to understand its history and how the castle got the nickname, The Whispers. A long time ago, there was once a lord of House Crab called Sir Clarence Crab. Sir Clarence was kind of a weirdo. I guess going out and killing wasn't enough for him. He needed a souvenir. So whenever he killed an enemy, he'd be sure to decapitate them, so he could bring their severed heads home to keep. Which you're probably thinking, eh, seems to be the Westerosi thing to decorate with decapitated heads. Hell, even a Stark decorated his entire coast with severed heads. That's your scepter, there. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give you a present. After I raise my armies and kill your traitor brother, I'm going to give you his head as well. Kind of the fashion. But it wasn't just the taking of heads as a warning or as spiffy decorations. It gets so much worse. As always with these sick fucks, Sir Clarence took it a step further. So when he'd bring the severed heads of his enemies home, he wouldn't just mount them as a warning to his enemies. He wouldn't just put them up as an accent in his castle or, you know, match a certain room's theme. No, this lunatic would have his wife kiss the heads. Which in itself is ew, okay? Ew. But then you have to imagine after she was done kissing the severed head, he probably kissed his wife. And that means he got corpse juices in his mouth and oh god damn it, why do I do these videos? Uh, I will give the guy credit though. There was a method to this really gross madness. When Sir Clarence's wife, who was a woods witch, kissed the severed head, it would actually magically come back to life. Now, if I was a severed head that came back to life, I'd probably spend a lot of time screaming and freaking out that I'm now a disembodied head. I mean, does anyone remember these monks from old Star Wars canon? I'll just say waking up without your body can cause issues. But I guess these severed heads brought back to life magically were super fucking chatty or something because they would actually talk to Clarence and give him advice. Since he brought back the heads of lords, pirates, wizards, and even a king, I'm sure they had a lot of great fucking advice to give too. Now, and I'm sorry to interrupt again, but if I was a severed head brought back to life by this guy, and I, I know I'm thinking way too hard about this, but I would totally screw this guy over. Yeah, you should definitely mount an attack against the Starks. No, become a pirate queen. It's the way to go. Like, fuck you, dude, you killed me and then brought me back to life. And also, your wife put her lips on mine without my permission. Hashtag me too, dick. Oh, and I want to read a quote from a member of House Crab on these talking heads. <clears throat> Being they was just heads, they couldn't talk real loud. But they never shut up, neither. When you're a head, talking's all you got to pass the day. So Crab's Keep got the name, The Whispers. See, if you talk about decapitated heads speaking like it's a normal thing, I don't like you. 
I don't like you one bit. But that quote is important because it reveals why the castle is called what it is. The sound the severed heads make is a whispering sound, which gave the castle its nickname. Or it sounds like whispering because the sea pours into holes made in the cliff, but... That's boring. So are these the tales of a madman imagining things? Or perhaps a man that's so sick of his wife he went crazy? Or perhaps the tales from a house that's kind of shitty and doesn't have anything else going on? Probably the last one. Or again, the whispering sounds are just the sounds of the sea pouring into holes made in the cliff where the castle sits. Who can say? Oh, you thought I was done! You thought those things were the only reason why you shouldn't visit this castle. Oh, sweet summer child. Well, to be honest, that is enough for me to tell you not to visit the castle. Just like I would tell you to never split up when you're in a large group at night, I would also never tell you to visit a castle that keeps severed heads like Funko Pops. But no, there's more you should know about this castle. You see the trees on their property? They water them? with blood. On its own? That's weird. But House Crab has a lot of First Men blood. What if they are sacrificing blood to weirwood trees, as the First Men used to do, for some dark purpose? And who are they getting this blood from? Because I'm a universal donor, I value my blood. I'm not gonna go somewhere where they're just gonna sacrifice it to some stupid trees. We're not done, by the way. This area also may have creatures, that are pedophiles, which is not a good thing. Please don't diddle, kids. So these creatures are said to steal bad children. The little boys, they'll eat them raw, tearing them apart with green teeth sharp as needles. But the little girls, they breed with them, which, not cool. So that is The Whispers, a ruined castle full of severed heads on a cliff overlooking a sea, surrounded by trees they water with blood, bogs full of dead people, and creatures that target children and diddle them. I give this place 7 out of 10 nopes and 10 out of 10 nopes if I was a minor. But how many nopes do you give it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and if you don't like your kids, I guess purchase your ticket here. Also, it would be really nice if you guys could stop sending selfies from hard home. I get it. I may have overreacted just a little bit. You're really starting to hurt my feelings.